Hey, buddy. So uh, this dog appears to have been hit by a car. has been out here all night. Thank you so much, you guys, for calling us. We appreciate it. We are going to take this dog to an emergency vet right now, um, try to get him tended to. Again, thank you for calling us. Um, we're headed to the vet right now with him. There's my right or left hand there is kind of cold. So was she um, in the front yard? She of was the house? laying on the curb uh, in the grass between the sidewalk and the street. Um, she laid there, lifted her head up, and went over there and petted her a little bit. She's very calm, gentle girl. She's in quite a bit of pain. Fortunately, she's been out there all night apparently, and. I'm shocked that her body temperature is still good. Right, and she doesn't appear to be owned by anyone, nobody in the neighborhood Well, knows there was her. a collar on her, but they didn't but know they who she didn't belonged know to. Who she belonged to. Okay. Turn right onto Seven Mile East. And then she's very young. Yeah. Did she have external injuries that you can see? Uh, on the underside, and her right leg here is just really swollen a lot. And she is, yeah, she does have some external injuries. Yeah. You can see some, um, you know, bleeding. And Abrasions bleeding. underneath here. You can see the abrasion there on her knee. Um, just, she's a pretty girl. She's beautiful, isn't she? She is beautiful. I'll cover her back up so she stays yeah, warm. She's too warm. And she certainly likes human touch. We don't know. We didn't scan her or anything. We didn't want to do too much because she was crying when she was being picked up. I couldn't tell if it's just from the movement and the trauma she has to her leg or if there's internal injuries. Perhaps she was hit by a car? Yeah. I'm guessing. We, we believe we saw some road rash there, so, yeah. so that's an indication of probably hit by a car. Right. Well, being New Year's Eve. <laughs> yeah. Turn right onto Chrysler Service Drive, then use the left lane to take the I-75 north ramp. Hopefully we'll be able to save her. So this is our first rescue of the new year, 2017. Right. Way to start off, right? That's right. <laughs> and, and really, you were on your way to try to rescue another Here's dog. Exactly. To take the and this happens a lot. We'll, we'll be going to try to rescue one dog north. and we get, you know, another call about another dog. So we prioritize. And obviously she's a priority because she's um, in severely injured. Right. So the other dog that we were trying to rescue has also been clipped by a car, but she's still mobile and moving. Um, so after we're done with this dog, we will go over and, and uh, try to see what I we can do to rescue um, the dog that was really our target dog today. You know, just like the gentleman that contacted us today about this poor girl, yeah. um, you know, we would never even know about her had they not have contacted us. She would be probably, you know, die a, a very painful, suffering death without people calling us to come help. That's actually what makes you, I think, the rescue so successful is that the community essentially has invited us in to do the job that many other, uh, I guess, commissioned organizations aren't doing really makes a big difference. There's just so many. There needs to be some some type of uh, policies put in place, enforceable policies, that mandatory spay and neuter for one. You know, that that we, we have actually seen this year a rise in the streets, on the streets of Detroit. And what do you attribute that to? Um, you know, procreation, obviously. Um, DAC, they've, they've actually made a good turnaround. They've saved a lot of uh, pit bulls, but unfortunately in the last three weeks, they had to shut down because of a respiratory infection problem that they had. And uh, they, They've actually transferred out dogs to rescues, other shelters. They've done a good job, but there's just so much, and you've got to cut off the water flow. 
uh, right. before you can ever make a big difference. And, exactly. Yeah. The problem is they're not picking up as many dogs. Right. We're, we're finding that there's less dogs being picked up in the city by other organizations. So, you know, those dogs are left out to get pregnant or to impregnate another dog. And, of course, then the, then the population grows. So no matter how, we rescued 533 dogs in 2016. And uh, we made a very small dent, you know, in, in really the amount of dogs that need help. We have a line of 119 dogs that need to be rescued. So and we don't have a shelter or any paid employees. So, you know, what do we do with all these dogs? It's amazing how even not just her, but dogs that are in such horrific shape that they might be a little fussy when you first pick them up, but as soon as you get them into the truck, get them calmed down, they get that human touch, and I guess they, you know, they feel that kindness or that love that uh, the hum from the human that they just calm down and just go with the flow after that. Yeah, and it's never the frustration of going out to get the animal frustration is the idiocy that is probably of the humans that has caused whatever tragedy is that you're getting ready to go into at that time. doesn't stink other than the blood that you can smell that coppery metallic mm -hmm. smell mm -hmm. hopefully we can save her and reunite her to her owners or get her better owners who don't let her run around no. Well, that is the thing, New Year's Eve, right? Yeah. With all the fireworks and the gunshots yeah. and dogs get scared and run, yep. you, you have right. to wonder how far away she yeah. could have come from. Right. And you never know the backstory and how they end up out there. Right. Oh, I know the girl that hurt, didn't it? Bouncing around. Right here, baby. Right Uh, no small puppy, maybe three months old. Stats the lobby, stats the lobby. We got stats for the lobby. They're coming right up for you. I'm going to hand you to Sonia. Can you have an account? Can you have an account? Yeah. Okay. Take them right back and we're going to get some vital signs started, okay? Absolutely. Oh, and this is the first thing I know. My name is Sasha. I'm one of the technicians. Uh, Dr. Sopaliga is taking a look, but what she asked is if we could get some permission for um, some x-rays. We're a little concerned that this, these might be old wounds. Did you actually see him get hit or her? Nobody saw her get hit. She was just laying in a pile of, like, grassy leaves. Okay. Um, the reason we're concerned that they might be old is that there's extreme swelling in that leg. Um, the wounds look like they could pot possibly be infected already, which mm -hmm. wouldn't happen with an initial um, trauma and we also are getting a high temperature. The witnesses said that they thought she'd been hit last night, but they didn't see her get hit, but they, they felt, they thought, I don't know why, but they thought that she'd been out there all night. So okay. Would that be, um, I, I still think we'd probably be days She was cold. warm when I picked her up and yeah. I expected her to be cold if she'd right. been if going she into hit, hypothermia we, or something. Right, we'd be worried about shock. Sure. Um, and shock usually decreases their yes. temperature, increased temperature. They look like they're possibly bite wounds. Oh, okay. mm. um, at this point, obviously, we don't know. We do think that that front leg okay. is broken. Mm. Um, the rear leg on the same side, we're concerned about also. We're not sure. She's very painful on it. We're not feeling any abnormalities in palpating it, but um, you know, without x-rays, we won't know. We'll authorize anything you um, need to do. And she does have wounds on the other front leg. Okay. But So we'll go ahead. We're going to get some x-rays. We'll probably do a test just to make sure in case she was hit by a car, then we can see what her lungs are doing. Okay. All right. So we'll get some x-rays. We're going to give her some pain medication, mm -hmm. too. 
um, hopefully get her feeling better, and then we'll get back with you guys and let you know yeah. what we find. Um, but we'll authorize anything because we got other calls, of course, today. So uh, we'll go ahead and authorize, or I'll sign anything that needs to be signed for her to get her x-rays, pain medicine, whatever she needs. Okay. Uh, and then we'll all right, let me get off. all that together so we can get it signed. Okay, and sounds get good. Going. She made, this is, you know, pretty broad because we're not really sure yet. Uh, but she has on their emergency visit doing the x-rays, blood work, um, IV fluids, and two days of hospitalization. Um, normal hospitalization care, injections, blood pressures, doing a culture in, on that area. And then she did put on here a fracture repair, anticipating, based upon what we find, that we will have to do a fracture repair on that leg, okay. um, whether that be today or a, a couple days down the road. Um, miscellaneous would be if we find something else, will we find another fracture, if we right. do find that this is an abscess. Um, her concern is, is if this is an old wound, old infection, is this swollen, she may have to lose that, that sure. limb. Um, but we will know more, obviously, once we get some more things, right. blood work and x-rays. But I know you guys need to leave, so we just need to have something signed by you guys saying, hey, we're okay to do this. Um, so I do need resuscitation orders on her if she were to resuscitate, if you want us to attempt to resuscitate her or do not resuscitate. Yes, attempt to. So right here we're looking at on the low end $5,300, on the high end $7,300. So you know this, this is an expensive uh, business to be in for sure. Did she have a chip? Uh, no, we scanned her for a chip with two different scanners and we're not finding anything. You know, obviously we'll look with x-ray too in case it migrated, but we did a pretty good rundown on her okay. with the with the Our vet bills are very expensive. Um, last year in 2016, we spent $105,000 vetting all the dogs that we pick up. Yes. Our, our centerline vet just hired a third vet because <laughs> we can pay their salary with all the injured dogs we bring in. But that's what we expect. You know, many of the dogs that we pick up are, are severely injured, you know, and so obviously they need um, expensive vet care to get better, which we're willing to pay as long as we have all of our generous donors helping us. We spent in 2016 $105,000 on our vet bill, so this is a hard to raise money, you know. Oh, I understand. We're beggars. Oh, I gotta look at this sweet dog. I know. Okay. Thank you for your help. All right. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.